Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, a Cadence Independent Media production. Today we are talking about two-ply rezzo heads on your toms. People have asked, and so we are delivering. In the last few videos, we've talked about different iterations of rezzo heads for your toms, clear, coated, different thicknesses, things like that. And a few people were curious about whether they should use two ply heads on the bottom, when to use them, what they're gonna do, what they're not gonna do. So uh, rather than a comparison video today, we're just gonna talk about the two plies and kind of put them through the paces and see what they can do. And thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by D'Addario for the sticks. Uh, today we're gonna do, I think maybe uh, acid jazzes today, cause uh, I love those too. So this drum right now has a G1 clear on the bottom and we're gonna switch it to a G2 clear and stick with the coated G2 that's in the batter side. Now, the thing about adding mass to your rezzo heads is it's gonna affect every facet of how they behave. And there are definitely times where a two ply is an improvement um, over a standard single ply. And there are times also when you might find yourself fighting it. And it has largely to do with the sound that you're trying to make the drum generate. In the same way that you wouldn't use like a calf tone for everything, or you wouldn't use a heavyweight or, you know, a black dot for everything. This is a specialized kind of situation. Um, and I've done it the most on floor toms, but we're gonna do it with both of the toms today because it does different things depending on the size of the drum as well. So we're gonna pull the G1 off and then we're just gonna put the G2 on and get it up to about finger tight and then kind of start from there. All right, so we're all G2'd up here. And uh, this is a good time to mention that uh, we are talking about adding mass to the rezzo head. This is not the same as adding a thicker single ply head. Um, you know, most of the companies are making things like up to 14 mil for like batter heads and rezzo heads. And that is more mass, but the situation here is we have more mass and we also have two separate sheets of plastic that are working together and also against each other a little bit to uh, ultimately make the sound. And that's really what makes a two ply head sound like a two ply head is the interaction between the two plies. So this is really specific to that. And um, I, I can't say I've ever done like a heavy single ply rezzo head on toms. Um, that might be a thing in the future. Um, and you know, let us know if you've done that because I'm, I'm curious. Um, but the two ply thing is pretty groovy and we're gonna kind of put this through the paces and figure out what it'll do and kind of like what it won't. The bottom heads are a little higher than the batters and the batters are really pretty low. They're, they're tighter than finger tight, but not by much. And we're gonna try out here and then we're gonna experiment with the intervals a little bit and see what we can do. Basically, what I'm after right now is the most low end I can possibly get and the most kind of just thunder and oomph out of the drums. As you may have seen in a couple of recent videos, we've added SM57s to the toms so that when we do this little demonstration here, you can hear our normal AKG 414, kind of like what I'm hearing sound, and then we're gonna add these in to give you a little more of an idea of what these do when you're using both an overhead kind of scenario and close mics. Thank you. 
these sound pretty awesome. And this is the sort of pitch range that I would tend to do this kind of setup for. Um, the bottom heads are about a whole step higher than the batters, and the batters are like kind of like right above where wrinkles come in. Like there's tone in there, but they're pretty low. Um, now, if we were using single ply heads or a combination of singles and doubles, we could come up pretty far from here and still get a pretty full sound. Um, but I want to do a little experiment here to test these out, which is I'm going to try and just get a different kind of character out of these drums. Not a dramatically different pitch, but I want to go for something that's a little less like big thunder and is a little more like punchy and articulate and see if I can make that happen. Um, basically what that boils down to is we're going to bring the batters up a little and we're going to bring the rezos up a little bit more than that and aim for more like a third between the two. All right, that tuning sounds great too. Um, it's actually significantly higher than the first tuning and they're still uh, feeling good, sounding good. Um, but as you can hear, the tone is big and it's also not really making it all the way to the sort of like headspace mic. The close mics are picking up a lot of low end and there is a lot of low end. Um, but that is sort of the trade-off when you start to thicken up your rezo heads is you're still getting that fat tone, but it becomes difficult for the drum to throw it a great distance. And that to me is why there's a time for this, uh, but unmiked loud live situations is a little bit dicey. Normally in those situations, we would pitch the drums up a little bit to try to get more projection, but even... By doing that, we're not getting that much more projection. There's some, for sure. But when compared to using a single-ply rezo head, and in some cases a single-ply batter head as well, uh, you're definitely going to get more throw for your money um, at any dynamic that you're playing. This is a great time to talk about some pretty cool science that we learned in the comments of last week's video when we were talking about uh, shell pitch and resonance and things like that. Uh, conventional wisdom, or at least our conventional wisdom, would say that as we would raise the pitch of the heads, we would be activating the shell more and dampening it less. But when you have as much mass as you do with two-ply heads or something even thicker than that, you are starting to actually compress the head and stifle the shell's capacity to resonate. And that sort of ends up working against you. And this is tricky because we think of two-ply heads as giving us a lot of kind of fatness and also being very durable and being good for loud playing, and that's true. 
But if you're in a situation where you're not mic'd and maybe everybody else is, or they're just playing super loud, uh, the tendency is going to be at any tuning for a certain degree of that to get swallowed up and not make it really like past where you're sitting. So sort of to sum up, this is a totally usable um, and really great sounding uh, head scenario, tuning scenario, all of that stuff. Uh, it just, you know, like every other one of these things, it's not for everything. And I would definitely use it in situations where I want to have a really thunderous sound and I know I'm going to be close mic'd. Um, because the amount of low end that's coming out of these versus the attack is really tremendous right here. And that's a great thing for the studio sometimes too, depending on the mic scenario and the music that you're making. Um, on the flip side, uh, at any tuning, you're going to be sacrificing projection. Um, and even if these batter heads were clear two plies, um, because they're coated, uh, it's the same thing. Um, there might be a, a fraction more attack, but that fundamental physical difference in the heads and how they're affecting the shell. It just is what it is. Um, but I have to say it does sound awesome. Um, and I re I'm really enjoying playing them. <laughs> we did a lot of extra <laughs> little things just now just because I was having a good time playing them. So uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and click that little button next to the subscribe button so you get notifications for all of our videos. And thank you to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Daddario, for helping us out. And let us know if you are a two-ply rezo guy or if you are definitely not a two-ply rezo guy. Um, and also, if you have any experience in any of those scenarios, close mic'd or live with no mics or recording, um, and how it kind of panned out for you and what you learned.